It goes against all human instinct, swimming towards a 2,000 kilo killing machine. When a 22 foot white shark comes up and rushes up against your boat and swims by for a scratch and you're swirled around by dolphins, you have a tiger shark just swim up and put its nose in your hand and just stop. It's incredible, that moment where they lock eyes and acknowledge you, it's hard to put it into words. Are you just a little bit crazy? <laughs> I think people are crazy for killing and wasting marine resources. I think actually um, I'm not. Ocean Ramsey swims with sharks for a living. She simply defies belief and just about every rule we've ever learned about sharks. Jaws wasn't really great for the movement, was it? <laughs> Jaws could have been one of like the worst things for sharks um, because it came at a time when people had very little information about sharks. And the human imagination is, um, is a bit more dramatic than reality. I go down underwater and all I hear is that music. I think it sounds like a cute soundtrack. Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound cute to me. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the difference. The, the reality is, is like I grew up with sharks and so I know, yeah. yes, what they're capable of. If this 32-year-old marine biologist has her way, she'll change the way we all think about this apex predator. I mean, who is looking after shark PR because they should be sacked, right? I'm trying, I'm really trying my hardest because it's unfortunate and there's not a lot of sympathy, but the thing is is that yes, they are predators and yes, they are demonized for that, but you need predators for healthy marine ecosystems. You need a boss to regulate things. You need governments to keep organization. It's a natural law. It's no easy task changing perception when in reality, sharks scare most of us to death. So, just a few miles off the coast of Hawaii's North Shore, I'm joining Ocean Ramsey on the hunt for large sharks to swim with. No cage, no protection, and I wish, no worries. So the sharks are gonna start to come up to the engines initially, right? They're putting out that electrical output, the noise, and so um, we're gonna be spotting for kind of like a dark gray shape. By her side is husband Juan Oliphant, filming every glorious, dangerous dive. The sharks here are large. Today, two 11-foot Galapagos circle our boat and us. I've been diving um, all around the world, um, but the whole notion of going and free diving with very big sharks is very nerve-wracking. Why would you get in the water with these big predators? So for me right now, just a little bit nervous. We'll give it a go anyway. How is it? In the water, you just want eyes in the back of your head. You feel like the sharks are exactly where you aren't looking. And they move so quickly from the darkness down below into the light and into your space in seconds. It's terrifying speed. It's a big shark. And when you have no protection, you feel completely exposed. It feels very peaceful though. It doesn't feel like you're under threat in any way. I feel pretty safe, I genuinely didn't think I would. Are you surprised at how brave I was then? I am very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful experience. I mean, it's a big shark. It's a really big shark when they come at you. You feel a little bit nervous with these guys in the water. I felt much more calm than I thought I would. It's a great experience. Scary, but great.
They are a fearsome creature though, this creature of the deep that kills so many people every year. How can you spin that PR? There's actually very few people that die from a shark related incident. Um, it's less than 10 fatalities globally, annually. It's the entire world, the entire year. Uh, toasters kill more people, <laughs> lightning kills more people. But I'm not afraid of toasters. <laughs> A man in his 50s has been taken to hospital after a suspected shark attack. Who has now become the third shark attack victim here in the Wit Sundays in just a matter of weeks. The hysteria around sharks, and I for one have been in that camp, does not fit the reality. But when they do attack, it's big news. The Tasmanian mother of two suffered critical injuries. When the man was mauled by a shark to his thigh, wrist and calf. It might be an irrational fear, but along our coastline, all around the country, sharks and tourism are uneasy bedfellows. And when dangerous encounters increase, so does the fear. In the picturesque Whit Sundays in North Queensland, it's not just tourism feeling the pressure. No doubt that there's been an increase in sharks. They're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. Where I go, like, I end up running into them and gear damaged by them and fish chewed up by them and so it's a big pain in the ass to me. Ron Brennan is a second generation professional fisherman. He says he's seeing more sharks than ever before and they are destroying his nets and his livelihood. See, that's a sizable hole too. Yeah, yeah you can see they, they chew around it and yeah. No one has a grasp of just how many sharks are in our oceans. Scientists say numbers are at record lows, but in protected bays like this, sometimes just metres from popular tourist beaches, fishermen like Ron say they are seeing more sharks than ever. Oh, it's a big one. Big hammery. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> so there's a kind of thing that's stuck in your nets every, do every time you go out. Yeah, yep, this is what we've got to put up with. And now you've got to try and get him off. Yep. Oh, gee, that's dangerous. It's no tiger shark, but it can still bite. What do you reckon about people who say, hang on a second, we should be looking after them? They have no idea. They don't have no, no idea how many's out here. They can sit down there and like, read books or whatever and play on their computer, and, but th until they get out here, then they, they, they understand. Across Australia, no one can agree on the safest shark protection program for swimmers. Just last month, the Queensland government was ordered to stop killing the sharks it catches on drum lines. In New South Wales and Western Australia, sharks are caught on drum lines, but instead of being killed, they are tagged and released. Ocean Ramsey says any money spent on putting drum lines in the ocean is a waste. I think that you have a human problem, not a shark problem. Um, too many sharks in one area, it's kind of like too many humans in one area. I think it would be wise to advise people on what to do to avoid adverse interactions, rather implementing things like nets and drum lines that actually, from a behavioural standpoint, actually attract sharks closer to shore. The problem is you've got this big tourism industry that, that's that's juxtaposing yes. and ramming straight into nature. Yeah, so let's get out our pitchforks and knives and go hunt down the monster, because that's gonna make big press. To be honest with you, it just highlights your problem more in press, and it actually further hurts tourism. Aren't people more important, though? But that's what I mean. If you really cared about people, you would install eco-barriers, and you would hire lifesavers who could actually spot mm -hmm. and prevent those type of things. It's a knee-jerk reaction, right? It's a political stunt, and it's a waste of your taxpayers' money. Coming up... If something happens to me, it's a thousand percent my fault. Ocean finds an unlikely ally. Either be lucky enough to survive or I won't. Attacked and almost killed. Ragdoll getting thrown around and chucked in the washing machine and kind of pulled apart. What happens when this victim... You're about to confront a creature that almost took your life. When we put it like that. Jumps back in the water. That's next on 60 Minutes.
it's a real paradise here, but there's obviously a war being waged out there, isn't there? Um, it's really sad. I mean, people don't realize the slaughter that's going on because it's out of sight. For most people, it's out of mind. Ocean Ramsey is a conservationist on a crusade to, in her own words, save Jaws. Do you think people care that much about sharks? Unfortunately, I don't think that most people care very much about sharks, but we're trying to change the tide on that to help them to better understand the importance of them in marine ecosystems. Her unorthodox view is beginning to catch on throughout the world, sometimes with the most unlikely people. So you think we need a rethink on the way that we all perceive sharks and the way we act around sharks? Yes, I think so. I think there's some amazing people out there you see swimming with sharks regularly, uh, scientists showing just in their own actions, no protection, mm. just how they swim with sharks, that none of them have been attacked. I've never heard of those scientists getting attacked. So obviously they're doing something different. If anyone knows the dangers of sharks, it's Glenn Dixon. Two years ago, the 25-year-old diver told his shocking story of survival on 60 Minutes. We're in a boat at the moment. We're racing in. We just had a shark attack. Are you with the patient now? Yeah, we're with the patient. He's not in a good way. Out spearfishing with mates off the far north Queensland coast, Glenn was attacked by a three and a half metre bull shark. All of a sudden, I felt a massive pull and shake. It got pulled slightly underwater, and I knew at that point that I was getting attacked by a shark. He was lucky to survive. The bite to his right leg was so severe, it had to be amputated. Even now, he still suffers physical pain, as well as regular flashbacks. I see myself diving, and, and I feel that first grab and then I feel like I'm a rag doll getting thrown around and chucked in a washing machine and, and then release and escape but uh, I think my brain manifests more and uh, the, the mauling <laughs> begins and uh, I get kind of pulled apart and then wake up. With relief? With relief yeah. Look around and just remember where I'm at. So it's, it's not just physical, it's an ongoing struggle for you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Today, Glenn has decided to confront those fears head on. Out on Queensland's Great Barrier Reef, he actually wants to see a shark and put some worry to rest. You're about to confront a creature that almost took your life. I mean, that is, there's nothing easy about that. Well, we put it like that. <laughs> Very true, but uh, it's not the exact same one anyway, so hopefully we find one that's not keen on trying human flesh. Do you worry about that? Being attacked again? If I worry about that, I'd be tr probably have trouble getting in. Mm. I don't worry about it, and, then, and I just see that uh, in my head it's not going to happen. Freed from the limitations of dry land, Glenn becomes something truly magical in the water. He is fearless. You're always going to have a bit of a nerves, but uh, once I'm in the water, I feel at home. Do you? Yeah, definitely do. I, I, you look at home? Yeah, it's, well, A, it's nice on the body for me. Because gravity is harder when you got one leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the water, it's just its a bit of bliss. It's pretty busy on land. It's a lot quieter down there. A lot more relaxing, I think. There might be folks who will say, well, listen, if you didn't want to get attacked by a shark, you shouldn't be spearfishing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that wasn't the answer I, was, I thought I was going to get. I thought you were going to fire up against me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm just lucky to still be alive. As he dives down to the bottom of the ocean, 
Behind him, a small reef shark appears. If Glenn is frightened, he doesn't show it. Oh, <laughs> how was that? Bloody excellent, eh? Hey, love it. Just saw it coming and coming up behind you. I didn't know whether you saw it or not. Oh, he was circling me a bit. <laughs> a bit of a surprise. Did it feel all right, though? Yeah, you know, just kept my eye on him. That's the main thing. Yeah, well, well done. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. You'll get back in the water again. You'll dive with sharks. You'll go and do your thing. What happens if something happens to you? Again. I'll probably either be lucky enough to survive or I won't. There's no magic answer to that. It's, you know, I'm not trying to chuck myself in harm's way and go, I just strongly believe that if I do things smart when I'm in there with the right people, I, on the day I did get attacked, you know, it was, I was coming to a form of complacency in the water. You know, I never will become complacent again with what I'm doing. They may live an ocean apart, but these two sea lovers are resolute in changing our view of these deadly fish. They know it will take time, some understanding, and perhaps a leap of faith before we all think it's truly safe to go back in the water. I'm not saying that um, anyone should just jump in the water with a tiger shark or white shark. If anything, I actually highly advise that people don't. Yeah. But I do advise that when they go in the ocean that they are looking around, that they are aware. And that is that will significantly decrease their chances of an adverse interaction. Have you ever thought about being a victim of a shark? What happens if, if that was to occur? Occupational hazard. It's absolutely a you possibility. Don't, you don't ever worry about it? Oh no, for sure. It's completely a possibility. But I definitely put myself in positions that I wouldn't advise people to. You can't control the ocean. Yeah, you can't control wild animals. So of course, I take that risk on and very publicly, if something happens to me, it's a thousand percent my fault. But I'm doing it for the bigger picture. And so if something happens to me, it wasn't the shark's fault. They're awesome. I put myself in their environment. If you don't want to take that risk, don't go in the ocean. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.